Vedanta, Sanskrit, Vedanta Iast, Vedanta or Uttara Mamamsa is one of the six orthodox schools of Hindu philosophy. Vedanta literally means, "...end of the Vedas." reflecting ideas that emerged from the speculations and philosophies contained in the Upanishads. It does not stand for one comprehensive or unifying doctrine. Rather it is an umbrella term for many sub-traditions, ranging from dualism to non-dualism, all of which developed on the basis of a common textual connection called the prasthanatrayi. The Prasthanatrayi is a collective term for the principal Upanishads, the Brahma Sutras and the Bhagavad Gita. All Vedanta schools, in their deliberations, concern themselves with the following three categories but differ in their views regarding the concept and the relations between them, Brahman, the ultimate metaphysical reality, Atman, Javatman, the individual soul or self, and Prakriti, the empirical world, ever-changing physical universe, body and matter. Some of the better known sub traditions of Vedanta include Advaita, non dualism, Vishishtadvaita, qualified non dualism, and Dvaita. Dualism. Most other Vedantic sub traditions are subsumed under the term Beda Beda, difference and non difference. Over time, Vedanta adopted ideas from other orthodox schools like Yoga and Nyaya, and, through this syncretism, became the most prominent school of Hinduism. Many extant forms of Vaishnavism, Shaivism and Shaktism have been significantly shaped and influenced by the doctrines of different schools of Vedanta. The Vedanta school has had a historic and central influence on Hinduism. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Etymology and Nomenclature. The word Vedanta literally means the end of the Vedas and originally referred to the Upanishads. Vedanta was concerned with the Junanakanda or Vedic knowledge part called the Upanishads. The denotation of Vedanta subsequently widened to include the various philosophical traditions based on to the Prasthanatrayi. The Upanishads may be regarded as the end of Vedas in different senses. These were the last literary products of the Vedic period. These mark the culmination of Vedic thought. These were taught and debated last. In the Brahmacharya student stage, Vedanta is one of the six orthodox schools of Indian philosophy. It is also called Uttara Mamamsa, the latter inquiry or higher inquiry, and is often contrasted with Purva Mamamsa, the former inquiry or primary inquiry. Purva Mamamsa deals with the Karmakanda or rituals part the Samhita and Brahmanas in the Vedas. Topic: <laughs> Prasthanatrayi, the three sources. The Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita and the Brahma Sutras constitute the basis of Vedanta. All schools of Vedanta propound their philosophy by interpreting these texts, collectively called the Prasthanatrayi, literally, three sources. The Upanishads, or Sruti Prasthana, considered the Sruti, the heard and repeated foundation of Vedanta. The Brahma Sutras, or Nyaya Prasthana, Yukti Prasthana, considered the reason-based foundation of Vedanta. The Bhagavad Gita, or Esemriti Prasthana, considered the Esemriti remembered tradition foundation of Vedanta. The Brahma Sutras attempted to synthesize the teachings of the Upanishads. The diversity in the teaching of the Upanishads necessitated the systematization of these teachings. 
This was likely done in many ways in ancient India, but the only surviving version of this synthesis is the Brahma Sutras of Badarayana. All major Vedantic teachers, including Shankara, Bhaskara, Ramanuja, Nimbaka, Vallabha, and Madhva, have composed commentaries not only on the Upanishads and Brahma Sutras, but also on the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita, due to its syncretism of Samkhya, Yoga, and Upanishadic thought, has played a major role in Vedantic thought. History The Upanishads present a rigorous philosophical inquiry in the form of identifying various doctrines and then presenting arguments for or against them. They form the basic texts and Vedanta interprets them through rigorous philosophical exegesis. Varying interpretations of the Upanishads and their synthesis, the Brahma Sutras, led to the development of different schools of Vedanta over time of which three, four, five or six are prominent. Advaita, many scholars of which most prominent are Gaudapada and Adi Shankaracharya 8th century CE, Vishishtadvaita, prominent scholars are Nathamuni, Yamuna and Ramanuja 1017-1137 CE Devaita, founded by Madhvacharya 1199-1278 CE Suddhadvaita, founded by Vallabha 1479-1531 CE Bedabeda, as early as the 7th century CE, or even the 4th century CE. Some scholars are inclined to consider it as a tradition rather than a school of Vedanta. Upadika, founded by Bhaskara in the 9th century CE, Svervavakavadaveda or Dvaitadvaita, founded by Nimbaka in the 13th century CE. Akantya Beda Ada, founded by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu (1486–1534 CE). The history of Vedanta is divided into two periods: one prior to the composition of the Brahma Sutras, and the other encompassing the schools that developed after the Brahma Sutras were written. Topic: Before the Brahma Sutras. Little is known of schools of Vedanta existing before the composition of the Brahma Sutras 400 to 450 BCE. It is clear that Badarayana, the writer of Brahma Sutras, was not the first person to systematize the teachings of the Upanishads, as he quotes six Vedantic teachers before him, Ashmerathya, Badari, Ordalomi, Kashakatsna, Karsnagini and Atreya. References to other early Vedanta teachers, Brahmadatta, Sundara, Pandaya, Tanka and Dravidacharya, are found in secondary literature of later periods. The works of these ancient teachers have not survived, but based on the quotes attributed to them in later literature, Sharma postulates that Ashmerathya and Ordalomi were Bedabeda scholars, Kashakatsna and Brahmadatta were Advaita scholars, while Tanka and Dravidacharya were either Advaita or Vishistadvaita scholars. Brahma Sutras Badarayana summarized and interpreted teachings of the Upanishads in the Brahma Sutras, also called the Vedanta Sutra. Badarayana summarized the teachings of the classical Upanishads and refuted the rival philosophical schools in ancient India. The Brahma Sutras laid the basis for the development of Vedanta philosophy, though attributed to Badarayana, the Brahma Sutras were likely composed by multiple authors over the course of hundreds of years. 
The estimates on when the Brahma Sutras were complete vary, with Nicholson in his 2013 review stating, that they were most likely compiled in the present form around 400–450 BCE. Isareva suggests they were complete and in current form by 200 CE, while Nakamura states that, "...the great part of the sutra must have been in existence much earlier than that." The book is composed of four chapters, each divided into four quarters or sections. These sutras attempt to synthesize the diverse teachings of the Upanishads. However, the cryptic nature of aphorisms of the Brahma Sutras have required exegetical commentaries. These commentaries have resulted in the formation of numerous Vedanta schools, each interpreting the texts in its own way and producing its own commentary. <laughs> Between the Brahma Sutras and Adi Shankara Little with specificity is known of the period between the Brahma Sutras 5th century BCE and Adi Shankara 8th century CE. Only two writings of this period have survived, the Vakyapadya, written by Bhatrari 2nd half 5th century, and the Karika written by Gaudapada early 6th or 7th century CE. Shankara mentions 99 different predecessors of his school in his commentaries. A number of important early Vedanta thinkers have been listed in the Siddhatraya by Yamanakaya c. 1050, the Vedarthasamgraha by Ramanuja c. 1050-1157, and the Yatandramatadapika by Srinivasa Dasa. At least 14 thinkers are known to have existed between the composition of the Brahma Sutras and Shankara's lifetime. A noted scholar of this period was Bhatriprapancha. Bhatriprapancha maintained that the Brahman is one and there is unity, but that this unity has varieties. Scholars see Bhatriprapancha as an early philosopher in the line who teach the tenet of Beda Beda. Topic: Gaudapada, Adi Shankara, and Advaita Vedanta. Gaudapada, c. 6th century CE, was the teacher or a more distant predecessor of Govindapada, the teacher of Adi Shankara. Shankara is widely considered as the founder of Advaita Vedanta. Gaudapada's treatise, the Karika also known as the Mandukya Karika or the Agama Sastra, is the earliest surviving complete text on Advaita Vedanta. Gaudapada's Karika relied on the Mandukya, Brihadaranyaka, and Chandogya Upanishads. In the Karika, Advaita non-dualism is established on rational grounds, upapati, independent of scriptural revelation. Its arguments are devoid of all religious, mystical, or scholastic elements. Scholars are divided on a possible influence of Buddhism on Gaudapada's philosophy. The fact that Shankara, in addition to the Brahma Sutras, the principal Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita, wrote an independent commentary on the Karika proves its importance in Vedantic literature. Adi Shankara (788–820) elaborated on Gaudapada's work and more ancient scholarship to write detailed commentaries on the Prasthanatrayi and the Karika. The Mandukya Upanishad and the Karika have been described by Shankara as containing the epitome of the substance of the import of Vedanta. It was Shankara who integrated Gaudapada work with the ancient Brahma Sutras and give it a locus classicus alongside the realistic strain of the Brahma Sutras. 
His interpretation, including works ascribed to him, has become the normative interpretation of Advaita Vedanta. A noted contemporary of Shankara was Mandana Misra, who regarded Mamamsa and Vedanta as forming a single system and advocated their combination known as Karma J Nana Samachchayavada. The treatise on the differences between the Vedanta school and the Mamamsa school was a contribution of Adi Shankara. Advaita Vedanta rejects rituals in favor of renunciation, for example. <laughs> Ramanuja and Vishishtadvaita Vedanta Ramanuja was the most influential philosopher in the Vishishtadvaita tradition. As the philosophical architect of Vishishtadvaita, he taught qualified non-dualism. Ramanuja's teacher, Yadava Prakasha, followed the Advaita monastic tradition. Tradition has it that Ramanuja disagreed with Yadava and Advaita Vedanta, and instead followed Nathamuni and Yamuna. Ramanuja reconciled the Prasthanatrayi with the theism and philosophy of the Vaishnava Alvars poet saints. Ramanuja wrote a number of influential texts, such as Abhasya on the Brahma Sutras and the Bhagavad Gita, all in Sanskrit. Ramanuja presented the epistemological and soteriological importance of bhakti, or the devotion to a personal god, Vishnu in Ramanuja's case, as a means to spiritual liberation. His theories assert that there exists a plurality and distinction between Atman souls and Brahman metaphysical, ultimate reality, while he also affirmed that there is unity of all souls and that the individual soul has the potential to realize identity with the Brahman. Vishishtadvayata provides the philosophical basis of Sri Vaishnavism. Ramanuja was influential in integrating bhakti, the devotional worship, into Vedanta premises. Topic: <laughs> Madhva and Dvaita. Dvaita was propounded by Madhvacharya He presented the opposite interpretation of Shankara in his Dvaita, or dualistic system. In contrast to Shankara's non-dualism and Ramanuja's qualified non-dualism, he championed unqualified dualism. Madhva wrote commentaries on the chief Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, and the Brahma Sutra. Madhva started his Vedic studies at age seven, joined an Advaita Vedanta monastery in Dwarka, Gujarat, studied under Guru Akutrapriksha, frequently disagreed with him, left the Advaita monastery, and founded Dvaita. Madhva and his followers Jayatirtha and Vyasashatha, were critical of all competing Hindu philosophies, Jainism and Buddhism, but particularly intense in their criticism of Advaita Vedanta and Adi Shankara. Dvaita Vedanta is theistic and it identifies Brahman with Narayana, or more specifically Vishnu, in a manner similar to Ramanuja's Vishishtadvaita Vedanta but it is more explicitly pluralistic. Madhva's emphasis for difference between soul and Brahman was so pronounced that he taught there were differences one, between material things, two, between material things and souls, three, between material things and God, four, between souls, and five, between souls and God. He also advocated for a difference in degrees in the possession of knowledge. He also advocated for differences in the enjoyment of bliss even in the case of liberated souls, a doctrine found in no other system of Indian philosophy. <inaudible> Overview of the schools of Vedanta <inaudible> Topic. 
schools propounding non-dualism topic <laughs> advaita school Advaita Vedanta IAST Advaita Vedanta Sanskrit Advaita Vedanta espouses non-dualism and monism Brahman is held to be the sole unchanging metaphysical reality and identical to Atman The physical world on the other hand is always changing empirical maya the absolute and infinite Atman Brahman is realized by a process of negating everything relative, finite, empirical and changing. The school accepts no duality, no limited individual souls Atman, Javatman, and no separate unlimited cosmic soul. All souls and existence across space and time is considered as the same oneness i.e. monism. Spiritual liberation in Advaita is the full comprehension and realization of oneness, that one's unchanging Atman soul is the same as the Atman in everyone else, as well as being identical to the Nirguna Brahman. Vishishtadvaita <inaudible> <inaudible> Vishishtadvaita asserts that Javatman human souls and Brahman as Vishnu are different, a difference that is never transcended. With this qualification, Ramanuja also affirmed monism by saying that there is unity of all souls and that the individual soul has the potential to realize identity with the Brahman. Vishishtadvaita, like Advaita, is a non-dualistic school of Vedanta in a qualified way, and both begin by assuming that all souls can hope for and achieve the state of blissful liberation. On the relation between the Brahman and the world of matter prakriti, Vishishtadvaita states both are two different absolutes, both metaphysically true and real, neither is false or elusive, and that Saguna Brahman with attributes is also real. Ramanuja states that God, like man, has both soul and body, and the world of matter is the glory of God's body. The path to Brahman Vishnu, according to Ramanuja, is devotion to godliness and constant remembrance of the beauty and love of the personal God Bhakti of Saguna Brahman. <laughs> Shuddhadvaita Shuddhadvaita pure non-dualism states that the entire universe is real and is subtly Brahman only in the form of Krishna. Vallabhacharya, the propounder of this philosophy, agreed with Advaita Vedanta's ontology, but emphasized that prakriti empirical world, body, is not separate from the Brahman, but just another manifestation of the latter. Everything, everyone, everywhere, soul and body, living and non-living, jiva and matter—is the eternal Krishna. The way to Krishna, in this school, is bhakti. Vallabha opposed renunciation of monistic sannyasa as ineffective and advocates the path of devotion bhakti rather than knowledge the goal of bhakti is to turn away from ego, self-centeredness and deception, and to turn towards the eternal Krishna in everything continually offering freedom from samsara. <laughs> School propounding dualism, Dvaita This school is based on the premise of dualism. Atman soul and Brahman as Vishnu are understood as two completely different entities. Brahman is the creator of the universe, perfect in knowledge, perfect in knowing, perfect in its power, and distinct from souls, distinct from matter. In Dvaita Vedanta, an individual soul must feel attraction, love, attachment and complete devotional surrender to Vishnu for salvation, and it is only his grace that leads to redemption and salvation. 
Madhva believed that some souls are eternally doomed and damned, a view not found in Advaita and Vishishtadvaita Vedanta. While the Vishishtadvaita Vedanta asserted, qualitative monism and quantitative pluralism of souls, Madhva asserted both, qualitative and quantitative pluralism of souls. Topic: Schools propounding Beda Beda. Beda Beda means difference and non-difference, and is more a tradition than a school of Vedanta. The schools of this tradition emphasize that the individual self, Jivatman, is both different and not different from Brahman. Notable figures in this school are Bhatriprapancha, Bhaskara 8th, 9th century, Ramanuja's teacher Yadavaprakasa, Nimbaka 13th century, who founded the Dvaitadvaita school, Chaitanya 1486-1534, who founded the Akantya Beda Ada school and Vijnanavaksu 16th century. Topic Apadika Bhaskara, in postulating Apadika, considers both identity and difference to be equally real. As the causal principle, Brahman is considered non dual and formless pure being and intelligence. The same Brahman, manifest as events, becomes the world of plurality. Jiva is Brahman limited by the mind. Matter and its limitations are considered real, not a manifestation of ignorance. Bhaskara advocated bhakti as dhyana meditation directed toward the transcendental Brahman. He refuted the idea of maya and denied the possibility of liberation in bodily existence. Nimbaka propounded Dvaitadvaita, based upon Beda Beda as was taught by Bhaskara. Brahman God, souls Chit and matter or the universe Akit are considered as three equally real and co-eternal realities. Brahman is the controller Niyanta, the soul is the enjoyer Bhoktr, and the material universe is the object enjoyed Bhogya. The Brahman is Krishna, the ultimate cause who is omniscient, omnipotent, all-pervading being. He is the efficient cause of the universe because, as lord of karma and internal ruler of souls, he brings about creation so that the souls can reap the consequences of their karma. God is considered to be the material cause of the universe because creation was a manifestation of his powers of soul chit and matter akit. .Creation is a transformation parinama of God's powers. He can be realized only through a constant effort to merge oneself with his nature through meditation and devotion. Akantya Beda Ada Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the prime exponent of Akantya Beda Ada. In Sanskrit, Akantya means inconceivable. Akantya Beda Ada represents the philosophy of inconceivable difference in non difference in relation to the non dual reality of Brahman Atman, which it calls Krishna, Svayam Bhagavan. The notion of inconceivability is used to reconcile apparently contradictory notions in Upanishadic teachings. This school asserts that Krishna is Bhagavan of the Bhakti Yogans, the Brahman of the Jnana Yogans, and has a divine potency that is inconceivable. He is all-pervading and thus in all parts of the universe non-difference, yet he is inconceivably more, difference. This school is at the foundation of the Gaudiya Vaishnava religious tradition. Vaishnava 
Topic: Vedanta philosophy. The important approaches followed by the most noted proponents of different schools of Vedanta are summarized below. To theorize that the soul Atman, Javatman, and the physical universe Prakriti are both identical with and different from Brahman. This view is held by Bhatriprapancha. To place non-dualistic ideas in the most important place, relegating dualistic ideas to an interim position. This approach is followed by Shankara. To theorize that non-dualism is qualified by difference. This is Ramanuja's approach. To emphasize dualism, discrediting and offering an alternative explanation of non-dualistic ideas. This is from Madhva. Sivananda gives the following explanation. Madhva said, Man is the servant of God, and established his Dvaita philosophy. Ramanuja said, Man is a ray or spark of God, and established his Visishtadvaita philosophy. Sankara said, Man is identical with Brahman or the eternal soul and established his Kavala Advaita philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Common features Despite their differences, all schools of Vedanta share some common features Brahman exists as the unchanging material cause and instrumental cause of the world. The Upanishads are a reliable source of knowledge Sruti Sabda in Pramana, Vedanta is the pursuit of knowledge into the Brahman and the Atman. Belief in rebirth and the desirability of release from the cycle of rebirths, moksa. The self Atman, Javatman, is the agent of its own acts karma, and the recipient of the consequences of these actions. Rejection of Buddhism and Jainism and conclusions of the other Vedic schools Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Samkhya, Yoga, and, to some extent, the Purva Mimamsa. <laughs> Metaphysics Vedanta philosophies discuss three fundamental metaphysical categories and the relations between the three. Brahman or Ishvara, the ultimate reality Atman or Javatman, the individual soul, self Prakriti, Jagat, the empirical world, ever-changing physical universe, body and matter Topic. Brahman, Ishvara, conceptions of the Supreme Reality Shankara, in formulating Advaita, talks of two conceptions of Brahman, the higher Brahman as undifferentiated being, and a lower Brahman endowed with qualities as the creator of the universe. Para or higher Brahman, the undifferentiated, absolute, infinite, transcendental, supra-relational Brahman beyond all thought and speech is defined as para-Brahman, nirvizesa Brahman or nirguna Brahman and is the absolute of metaphysics. Apara or lower Brahman, the Brahman with qualities defined as apara Brahman or saguna Brahman. The Saguna Brahman is endowed with attributes and represents the personal god of religion, Ramanuja, in formulating Vishishtadvaita Vedanta, rejects Nirguna that the undifferentiated Absolute is inconceivable and adopts a theistic interpretation of the Upanishads, accepts Brahman as Ishvara, the personal god who is the seat of all auspicious attributes, as the one reality. 
The god of Vishishtadvaita is accessible to the devotee, yet remains the absolute, with differentiated attributes. Madhva, in expounding Dvaita philosophy, maintains that Vishnu is the supreme god, thus identifying the Brahman, or absolute reality, of the Upanishads with a personal god, as Ramanuja had done before him. Nimbarka, in his Dvaitadvata philosophy, accepted the Brahman both as Nirguna and as Saguna. Vallabha, in his Shuddhadvaita philosophy, not only accepts the triple ontological essence of the Brahman, but also his manifestation as personal god Ishvara, as matter and as individual souls. Relation between Brahman and Jiva, Atman The schools of Vedanta differ in their conception of the relation they see between Atman, Jivatman, and Brahman, Ishvara. According to Advaita Vedanta, Atman is identical with Brahman and there is no difference. According to Vishishtadvaita, Jivatman is different from Ishvara, though eternally connected with him as his mode. The oneness of the Supreme Reality is understood in the sense of an organic unity Brahman, Ishvara alone, as organically related to all Jivatman and the material universe is the one ultimate reality. According to Dvaita, the Jivatman is totally and always different from Brahman, Ishvara. According to Shuddhadvaita, pure monism, the Jivatman and Brahman are identical, both, along with the changing empirically observed universe being Krishna. Topic: <inaudible> Epistemology. <inaudible> Topic Pramana Pramana Sanskrit Pramana literally means proof that which is the means of valid knowledge. It refers to epistemology in Indian philosophies and encompasses the study of reliable and valid means by which human beings gain accurate, true knowledge. The focus of pramana is the manner in which correct knowledge can be acquired, how one knows or does not know, and to what extent knowledge pertinent about someone or something can be acquired. Ancient and medieval Indian texts identify six pramanas as correct means of accurate knowledge and truths. Pratyaksa, perception. Anumana, inference. Upamana comparison and analogy Arthapati postulation derivation from circumstances Anupalabdi non-perception negative cognitive proof Sabda scriptural testimony verbal testimony of past or present reliable experts the different schools of vedanta have historically disagreed as to which of the six are epistemologically valid for example while advaita vedanta accepts all six pramanas vishishtadvaita and dvaita accept only three pramanas perception inference and testimony advaita considers pratyaksa perception as the most reliable source of knowledge and sabda the scriptural evidence is considered secondary except for matters related to brahman where it is the only evidence in Vishistadvaita and Dvaita, Sabda, the scriptural testimony, is considered the most authentic means of knowledge instead. <laughs> Theories of cause and effect All schools of Vedanta subscribe to the theory of Satkaryavada, which means that the effect is pre-existent in the cause. But there are two different views on the status of the effect, that is, the world. 
Most schools of Vedanta, as well as Samkhya, support Parinamavada, the idea that the world is a real transformation Parinama of Brahman. According to Nicholson 2010, p. 27, the Brahma Sutras espouse the realist Parinamavada position, which appears to have been the view most common among early Vedantins. In contrast to Badarayana, Adi Shankara and Advaita Vedantists hold a different view, Vivartavada, which says that the effect, the world, is merely an unreal vivata transformation of its cause, Brahman. Influence <inaudible> 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 Topic: Hindu traditions. Vedanta, adopting ideas from other orthodox schools, became the most prominent school of Hinduism. Vedanta traditions led to the development of many traditions in Hinduism. Sri Vaishnavism of South and Southeastern India is based on Ramanuja's Vishishtadvaita Vedanta. Ramananda led to the Vaishnav Bhakti movement in North, East, Central and West India. This movement draws its philosophical and theistic basis from Vishishtadvaita. A large number of devotional Vaishnavism traditions of East India, North India particularly the Braj region, West and Central India are based on various sub-schools of Bedabeda Vedanta. Advaita Vedanta influenced Krishna Vaishnavism in the northeastern state of Assam. The Madhva school of Vaishnavism found in coastal Karnataka is based on Dvaita Vedanta, Agamas, the classical literature of Shaivism, though independent in origin, show Vedanta association and premises. Of the 92 Agamas, 10 are Dvaita texts, 18 Bedabeda, and 64 Advaita texts. While the Bhairava Shastras are monistic, Shiva Shastras are dualistic. Isareva 1995 pp 134 to 135 finds the link between Gaudapada's Advaita Vedanta and Kashmir Shaivism evident and natural. Tarumula, the Tamil Shaiva Siddhanta scholar, credited with creating Vedanta Siddhanta, Advaita Vedanta and Shaiva Siddhanta synthesis, stated, Becoming Shiva is the goal of Vedanta and Siddhanta, all other goals are secondary to it and are vain. Shaktism, or traditions where a goddess is considered identical to Brahman, has similarly flowered from a syncretism of the monist premises of Advaita Vedanta and dualism premises of Samkhya Yoga school of Hindu philosophy, sometimes referred to as Shaktadvaitavada, literally, the path of non-dualistic Shakti. Neo-Vedanta Neo-Vedanta, variously called as Hindu Modernism, Neo-Hinduism, and Neo-Advaita, is a term that denotes some novel interpretations of Hinduism that developed in the 19th century, presumably as a reaction to the colonial British rule. King 2002 pp 129 to 135 writes that these notions accorded the Hindu nationalists an opportunity to attempt the construction of a nationalist ideology to help unite the Hindus to fight colonial oppression Western orientalists in their search for its essence attempted to formulate a notion of Hinduism based on a single interpretation of Vedanta as a unified body of religious praxis. This was contrafactual as, historically, Hinduism and Vedanta had always accepted a diversity of traditions. 
King 1999 pp 133 to 136 asserts that the neo-vedantic theory of overarching tolerance and acceptance was used by the Hindu reformers, together with the ideas of universalism and perennialism, to challenge the polemic dogmatism of Judeo-Christian Islamic missionaries against the Hindus. The Neo-Vedantins argued that the six orthodox schools of Hindu philosophy were perspectives on a single truth, all valid and complementary to each other. Halbfass 2007, p. 307 sees these interpretations as incorporating Western ideas into traditional systems, especially Advaita Vedanta. It is the modern form of Advaita Vedanta, states King 1999, p. 135. The Neo-Vedantists subsumed the Buddhist philosophies as part of the Vedanta tradition and then argued that all the world religions are same, non-dualistic position as the Philosophia Perennis, ignoring the differences within and outside of Hinduism. According to G. Wire, 2000, p. 140, Neo Vedanta is Advaita Vedanta, which accepts universal realism. Ramakrishna, Vivekananda, and Aurobindo have been labeled Neo Vedantists, the latter called it realistic Advaita, a view of Vedanta that rejects the Advaitin's idea that the world is illusory. As Aurobindo phrased it, philosophers need to move from universal illusionism to universal realism, in the strict philosophical sense of assuming the world to be fully real. A major proponent in the popularization of this universalist and perennialist interpretation of Advaita Vedanta was Vivekananda, who played a major role in the revival of Hinduism. He was also instrumental in the spread of Advaita Vedanta to the West via the Vedanta Society, the international arm of the Ramakrishna order. Criticism of Neo-Vedanta label Nicholson 2010, p. 2, writes that the attempts at integration which came to be known as Neo-Vedanta were evident as early as between the 12th and the 16th century minus Certain thinkers began to treat as a single whole the diverse philosophical teachings of the Upanishads, epics, Puranas, and the schools known retrospectively as the six systems. Sadasana of mainstream Hindu philosophy, Matilal criticizes Neo-Hinduism as an oddity developed by West-inspired Western Indologists and attributes it to the flawed Western perception of Hinduism in modern India. In his scathing criticism of this school of reasoning, Matilal 2002, pp. 403–404 says, the so-called traditional outlook is in fact a construction. Indian history shows that the tradition itself was self-conscious and critical of itself, sometimes overtly and sometimes covertly. It was never free from internal tensions due to the inequalities that persisted in a hierarchical society, nor was it without confrontation and challenge throughout its history. Hence Gandhi, Vivekananda and Tagore were not simply, transplants from Western culture, products arising solely from confrontation with the West. It is rather odd that, although the early Indologists' romantic dream of discovering a pure and probably primitive, according to some form of Hinduism or Buddhism as the case may be, now stands discredited in many quarters, concepts like Neo-Hinduism are still bandied about as substantial ideas or faultless explanation tools by the Western analytic historians as well as the West-inspired historians of of India. Topic: <inaudible> Influence on Western thinkers. 
An exchange of ideas has been taking place between the Western world and Asia since the late 18th century as a result of colonization of parts of Asia by Western powers. This also influenced Western religiosity. The first translation of Upanishads, published in two parts in 1801 and 1802, significantly influenced Arthur Schopenhauer, who called them the consolation of his life. He drew explicit parallels between his philosophy, as set out in the world as will and representation, and that of the Vedanta philosophy as described in the work of Sir William Jones. Early translations also appeared in other European languages. Influenced by Sankara's concepts of Brahman God and Maya illusion, Lucian Blaga often used the concepts Morele Anonym the Great Anonymous and Censura Transcendenta the Transcendental Censorship in his philosophy. Topic: Reception. According to Nakamura 1950, p. 3, the Vedanta school has had a historic and central influence on Hinduism. The prevalence of Vedanta thought is found not only in philosophical writings but also in various forms of Hindu literature, such as the epics, lyric poetry, drama and so forth. The Hindu religious sects, the common faith of the Indian populace, looked to Vedanta philosophy for the theoretical foundations for their theology. The influence of Vedanta is prominent in the sacred literatures of Hinduism, such as the various Puranas, Samhitas, Agamas and Tantras. Frithjof Shuan summarizes the influence of Vedanta on Hinduism as follows. The Vedanta contained in the Upanishads, then formulated in the Brahma Sutra, and finally commented and explained by Shankara, is an invaluable key for discovering the deepest meaning of all the religious doctrines and for realizing that the Sanatana Dharma secretly penetrates all the forms of traditional spirituality. Flood 1996, pp. 231–232, 238 states The most influential school of theology in India has been Vedanta, exerting enormous influence on all religious traditions and becoming the central ideology of the Hindu Renaissance in the 19th century. It has become the philosophical paradigm of Hinduism par excellence. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Similarities with Spinoza's philosophy. German Sanskritist Theodor Goldstucker was among the early scholars to notice similarities between the religious conceptions of the Vedanta and those of the Dutch Jewish philosopher Baruch Spinoza, writing that Spinoza's thought was so exact a representation of the ideas of the Vedanta, that we might have suspected its founder to have borrowed the fundamental principles of his system from the Hindus, did his biography not satisfy us that he was wholly unacquainted with their doctrines. Comparing the fundamental ideas of both we should have no difficulty in proving that, had Spinoza been a Hindu, his system would in all probability mark a last phase of the Vedanta philosophy. Max Müller noted the striking similarities between Vedanta and the system of Spinoza, saying, the Brahman, as conceived in the Upanishads and defined by Sankara, is clearly the same as Spinoza's substantia. Helena Blavatsky, a founder of the Theosophical Society, also compared Spinoza's religious thought to Vedanta, writing in an unfinished essay, As to Spinoza's deity, Natura Natrans, conceived in his attributes simply and alone, and the same deity, 
as Natura Naturata or as conceived in the endless series of modifications or correlations, the direct outflowing results from the properties of these attributes, it is the Vedantic deity pure and simple. See also Badarayana Monistic idealism List of teachers of Vedanta Self-consciousness Vedanta equals equals notes <laughs>